Okay, uh, I'm Michiel Borkent from the Netherlands. Uh, I'm a software developer, uh, primarily developing software in Clojure, uh, which is a Lisp on the JVM, um, which has excellent interop with uh, Java and other uh, features on the on the JVM. Um, and this talk is about uh, Babeshka, which is a tool that I made uh, to solve a particular pro problem in the Clojure ecosystem. Um, so first, um, <clears throat> I've been using GraalVM <clears throat> for about two years to make uh, native images um, for, uh, yeah, to, to make command line applications basically uh, from Clojure software. Um, and one example of this is uh, CLJ Condo, which is a, a linter for closure and also a static analyzer. It can output uh, a lot of information about closure code that you feed into it. Um, it's available on the JVM, but it's also av available as a command line application. So you can just uh, throw code at it. It, it doesn't need any uh, knowledge about uh, a class path or whatever. So you can just throw some closure code at it and it will tell you things about it. Uh, for example, here we uh, throw the, the uh, expression increment one, two at the linter and we get back an error message. Uh, well, the function increment is called with two arguments instead of uh, just one, uh, which is an error. Um, and this output you can also use in your editor to get uh, almost instant feedback about uh, what you're typing in the editor. So here uh, we, we type a, a, a local or a variable that, that's not uh, resolvable. So you get an unresolved symbol warning. And here we get a, a type error. Uh, although closure is dynamically typed, um, we can infer some things about it just by uh, looking at, well, this, the str str function uh, always returns a string. So if we feed this expression into the inc function, which always ex expects a number, we can also uh, print a warning. So this is CLD Condo. This was one of the first projects that I did with uh, GraalVM. Um, but the, the other one, which this talk is about, is called Babeshka. And Babeshka is a scripting environment for Clojure. So um, uh, typically Clojure has a startup of one to two seconds on the JVM. And depending on how many libraries you include uh, in your programs, it takes longer and longer. So that's not a good fit for uh, shell scripts. Um, so what this uh, Babeshka tool does, it, it re-implements a interpreter for a subset of the Clojure language, uh, which is then compiled with GraalVM to a native image. And then you can execute Clojure expressions uh, with milliseconds of startup. Um, so uh, yeah, when I made the linter, I already uh, gained a lot of knowledge about how Clojure works and how it evaluates things. And this gave me, a, me the idea to, to build the interpreter. Um, so the, the fast startup is the main problem it solves for the Clojure uh, ecosystem. Uh, it's an alternative to bytecode byte code compilation by the, closure, uh, the original Clojure JVM compiler this, that compiles to bytecode. And I cannot load uh, bytecode at runtime in a GraalVM binary that so far that didn't work. Maybe with Espresso, this, this will change, but this is a question uh, for me. Um, so the goal of this tool is to prevent context switch for uh, closure developments who are working in closure all, all day long and then have to write a few bash scripts. Um, they don't want to use a different language. They just want to stay in what language they already are familiar with. Uh, so they want to write just uh, some scripts using Clojure. Uh, this tool comes with batteries included, uh, a lot of libraries for JSON parsing, HTTP client and server, etc. Uh, it, uh, it supports multi-threading, so you can spawn multiple threads to 
to to do things in the background, uh, real uh, JVM threads, uh, and it has uh, source compatibility with JVM closure. And using Graal VM, you have a sane upgrade path when the the performance of this tool is not enough. You can just take your code and compile it with Graal VM and have the same fast startup. Uh, which make this, makes this uh, relatively low risk uh, tool to start using for scripting. Um, the performance is not as good, obviously, as the closure compiler, because this is an interpreter and it, this interpreter is not based on Truffle. I will get into that later. Um, so the sweet spot here is if your script runs below five seconds, it's fine. And if it runs longer than five seconds, it's probably better to uh, to use the JVM and or GraalVM for a uh, native image compilation. Um, so this is an example script. Uh, so this is typically what you have in Clojure. Uh, you define a namespace and you use other namespaces. And these namespaces come from either libraries or uh, in the case of Babeshka, these are built-in libraries. and what this example does, uh, I, I won't go into the details, but it's just to illustrate what a, what a, what a script can look like in Babeshka. Um, so what we do here, we shell out to SQLite and we produce some, some SQL using string concatenation, which is obviously a bad idea, but you can do it. Uh, and then we shell out to, to SQLite to store some data. Um, so you can see here, you can define functions uh, just like in normal closure. And we also support uh, Java interop. So you, here you see, uh, we invoke the delete method on a file object. And uh, here we invoke the exit static method on the system object that all uh, works, provided that we include uh, the class in the native image. So you don't have access to the entire JVM uh, 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 base uh, libraries, uh, unless we include it explicitly. Um, so yeah, this is not so nice approach because uh, here we shell out to uh, to SQLite and we have to parse the output, which is CSV. So it's a lot of manual uh, things, but it works. Um, so on the JVM, this program takes about 1.3 seconds on my machine. And with Babeshka, it takes uh, 52 milliseconds, of which uh, 25 milliseconds is uh, startup on, on Mac OS, which is less fast than on Linux. So on Linux, this, this would probably be around 30 uh, milliseconds. So uh, we can enhance this uh, script by using something that we, uh, by a library in the ecosystem, which is called Honey SQL. This is just to illustrate that you can use libraries uh, also with Babeshka from the existing Clojure ecosystem. So uh, this library did not require any changes to, to run with Babeshka instead of uh, the JVM Clojure. Uh, and so this is a call which fetches it automatically from, uh, from uh, Maven or Maven or Clojars, which is a special uh, Maven repository for, for the Clojure ecosystem. And now instead of writing SQL manually, we generate SQL from some Clojure data structures. And this loading the library takes another 50 milliseconds for 1400 lines of Clojure, which yields uh, 100 milliseconds, which is still an ideal number for a shell script. Um, and there is one other way we can extend uh, programs uh, in Babeshka, which is called uh, pods. And pods are stand standalone um, command line tools, which provide something like an RPC server, which you can talk to from Babeshka. So this is a way to extend Babeshka with things that you cannot express in uh, source code. And we provide, for example, a pod which exposes SQLite directly, which wraps the Go SQLite uh, library. And that is written in Golang. So a pod can be written in any language. It can also be another GraalVM binary. And now we have uh, better 
um, integration. So we can just uh, execute the SQLite execute function and we get back uh, nice closure data structures instead of uh, that we have to parse uh, the CSV output. So this is our entire script now, and it takes about 80 milliseconds for this uh, to create a table, uh, to insert some data, and to to uh, select all the all the data from it, and then print it. So uh, that's an example of a, a script in Babeshka, um, just to give you an idea uh, what you can do typically with Babeshka scripts. Um, so this is the structure of the Babeshka tool. So we have some uh, CLI parsing of the options. We have um, some feature flags and uh, uh, configurations. Uh, we have a re-implementation of something that we call the class path. It's actually more a source path than a class path. So we use this to, to load the libraries. I had to re-implement this because in GraalVM native image, you cannot use the uh, class loader features until maybe recently, I don't know, but I had to re just re-implement uh, uh, walking over jar files and uh, searching for, for, for files, things like that. And then it has a class configuration, which, uh, which uh, decides which classes you can interrupt with in, in, uh, in the scripts. And it has a REPL, of course, which uh, that is the primary way of developing programs in Clojure. And it comes with a interpreter. And um, I will go into the interpreter uh, next. But first, I will show you, this is the giant list of all the classes that we have in uh, Babeshka. Well, it's not even all of them, but uh, to provide interop, uh, for uh, uh, for the classes, we we use the reflection configuration in GraalVM, uh, and then we use reflection to implement the interop in the in the interpreter. So the interpreter itself, it's called uh, SI, which stands for Small Closure Interpreter. Uh, it is split out into its own project, um, so people can not only use Babeshka, but they can make uh, some other version of Babeshka with a whole different set of libraries from the ecosystem that specializes maybe in other areas, like maybe static site generation or, um, or other. Uh, it's written in Clojure itself. Uh, we use something called CLJC which allows you to make branches for each dialect of closure. So uh, this interpreter is written for the JVM, but also compiles to JavaScript. And this is just done using these, these conditionals. Uh, and almost all of the, the interpreter has no differences for JVM and closure script, except for the interop part, which is, uh, yeah, of course, different on the JVM than in Java, uh, JavaScript. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it, it was it was split out into a library because then people can reuse this. Uh, as I said, the performance is not as good, but it's good enough for typical Bash-like uh, scripts. Um, it yields yields uh, small image, small native images. So if you don't include anything extra, it's around 11 megabytes with the GraalVM Java 11. And if you include it as a uh, JavaScript, um, if you compile it to JavaScript, it yields yields about 120 kilobytes uh, gzipped. And um, in this interpreter can be used to glue together. Uh, libraries that you compile with GraalVM to uh, native image to glue together uh, functions from these libraries and interpreted code. So this is the structure of the interpreter. We start here. This is the core namespace. And th this is the API, so to speak. And these are all private uh, components that we don't expose. Uh, so this is the entry point and here we have an interpreter um, uh, which first 
uh, it first it parses an expression from text. So then we get an, something called an S expression. That's just an, a data structure which, which represents the code. And then we send that data structure to the analyzer. And the analyzer tries to resolve uh, functions, uh, locals, and classes. And it tries to do as much as possible to make the work here uh, efficient as possible. Uh, so we analyze the forms and then we send it to the evaluator, which then evaluates these, uh, these forms, hopefully uh, in a performant way, but um, we, do, we do not have anything like in Truffle, like specializations for, for uh, numeric operations or things like that. So it's pretty uh, basic, but for scripting, it's, it's good enough um, in most cases. Um, and we have some component to, that takes care of the interop. Um, yeah. So this is how it looks when you use it from Clojure itself. Uh, so you require sci.core, uh, the namespace, and then you can just say eval string. You give it a string and it returns uh, the result six. But of course you want to remember some state. And if you want to remember state, you have to first create a context which you do using sci init, and then you can give it a configuration. So here we say uh, it has a namespace foo with a value X in it. And then you can say eval string star, which gets a context and a string. And you say foo slash X and it returns one. Uh, and if you, you can reuse this context object to uh, evaluate more, uh, things like we define a function here and it remembers this function inside the context. So this is the only place where the state is stored and we do not affect any global environment. So, uh, so if you provide, provide this context again, you can call the function that we defined before. Um, so here I show uh, how you can, um, so how you can hook in existing functions from Clojure itself, but also libraries that we provide in Babeshka, for example. So here we have a function called uh, asoc, which means add something to a map. Um, and this function is called here in a uh, from in this string, but it maps to the function that we provided in this configuration. So it's looked up in the analyzer and then uh, it's a direct call. Uh, and the same for this uh, generate string function, which comes from a JSON library called Cheshire. So, so this is, uh, if you're lucky, we have a lot of native compiled functions that we can uh, use. Uh, and this, this makes the performance relatively fast uh, still because we don't have to do any interpretation on these functions because they come from the, the core uh, libraries. So uh, an example, uh, some, uh, so this is bootleg, which uh, uses Sci to compile uh, closure data structures to HTML. And you can use this for static site uh, generation. So this is another tool which uses Sci. Uh, Next Journal is a uh, company which spe specializes in uh, mathematical uh, or scientific notebooks. And they use the small closure interpreter uh, in JavaScript to provide an interactive uh, experience. I'm also using Sci inside uh, the CLJ Condo linter to allow people to teach CLJ Condo about, about macros that it does not understand. So here we have a try plus macro and you can provide a hook which expands uh, the, the node that this node here into something which uh, Salesia Condo can, can understand. So if you provide this hook, um, you will go from an error to a useful warning. Um, yeah, so this is, I'm using Sci now myself also in the, in the linter. Um, some uh, general remarks about closure and GraalVM. Um, so uh, there was a, uh, before closure 1.10.2, there was a bug, or not really a bug, but 
there was an issue with a, a locking macro, which uh, often made GraalVM compilation fail due to imbalanced uh, monitor objects. And this is now uh, fixed, uh, luckily. Um, <clears throat> and also in Java 11, there was an issue with closure uh, around method, method handle because closure itself, I don't know if, if you can read it, but I made a little bit screenshot of this code. So a closure itself has a condition in a static in, in, initializer block uh, where it checks the Java version and then uh, uses the can access method or, or not. Uh, but this was something GraalVM could not understand. So I had to make some substitution for it. Uh, but this is now not needed anymore because GraalVM 21 can, uh, can understand this code. And the only thing we have to do now is to add uh, Java long reflect accessible object can access to the reflection config. And then GraalVM has no problem anymore with uh, closure on Java 11. So this combination of closure and GraalVM 21 is really good. Uh, and it, it becomes easier and easier to write closure native images. Uh, these are two repositories with uh, good information about how to write closure with GraalVM. Um, some thoughts about Truffle. Um, I am interested in Truffle. I have re uh, recently finished uh, the three hour uh, talk, um, but I have a lot of questions. Um, so maybe the Psi interpreter can be optimized by rewriting it to Truffle. Um, but maybe another approach is maybe using Espresso, we can uh, compile the closure compiler itself, maybe. But I don't know how that would affect the startup time. Uh, there is also a closure on Truffle thesis from 2015, but the source code is not available. So this is a custom closure interpreter. Um, so these are some questions that I have. Can we AOT guest language? Uh, code, can we define new classes at runtime? And can we mix host language AOT functions with guest language defined functions? Uh, I don't know, but I would be interested to hear more about this from you. Um, these are some talks uh, that I gave earlier, if you want to know more about Babeshka or Sai, and these are the repositories on uh, GitHub. Uh, so this is my talk, thank you very much. Any questions? Oh, uh, thanks for the talk, Michael. I uh, haven't played around with Babeshka, but I'm wondering uh, what kind of GraalVM tools can you use for Babeshka and your closure interpreter? Like, can you use uh, the multi language debugging infrastructure, for instance? Uh, well, Babeshka uh, or Sai is just a regular closure uh, program. And it doesn't, it, it is agnostic to, to uh, Truffle. So it, it doesn't have any special uh, things that it exposes to make uh, GraalVM tooling easier. But from the perspective of GraalVM, it's just another uh, JVM program, so to speak. Okay, so that might be something to consider because you were wondering whether you can compile that on top of espresso then you still wouldn't benefit from the tools right yeah you would only yeah. benefit if if you have a closure interpreter written in truffle yeah yeah okay thanks i muted uh thank you and i have a question about the static analysis you used uh, when you use the static analysis did you tailor it out of the graph vm or you just use it as uh, use it directly and just exit earlier um so the static analysis uh the, the sale condo tool that i wrote um, it it uses um, um, it doesn't also doesn't uh, use any GraalVM specific tools, but I, I did 
need to make a lot of changes to existing tooling to make it work with GraalVM because a lot of uh, anal analysis tools for closure, they require to execute closure code, uh, which basically uh, needs uh, either bytecode compilation or something like uh, Babeshka. So I, I needed to rewrite the static analysis from scratch to take care of uh, that it works without any uh, evaluation because Clojure has macros and these macros are often expanded uh, during uh, compile time. Uh, but this is not something you can do inside of a, uh, a native image. Okay, uh, does that you. Yeah. So Celticono and Babeshka are basically workarounds for some limitations that I had in, in GraalVM, uh, not being able to compile uh, bytecode at runtime or not execute new bytecode, basically. Uh, so, ah, do you want to read your question? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Uma. I'm uh, from uh, Twitter. Uh, I was wondering uh, who is using. I, you know, I'm not at all familiar with this area, so I was wondering mm -hmm. who is using yeah. it right now, and what is what does the word mean, and yeah. what <laughs> what are you what are you where are you intending to take this forward? So yeah, uh, what's your uh, so, yeah. So Babeshka is used by uh, a lot of people who are using uh, closure for their day job, but they uh, are, are a little bit tired of bash uh, and they just want to use closure also for scripting. But normally this, you could not really, you could do this, but it would take a few seconds for these scripts to run. And this is what the tool optimizes for. Uh, so I have a Slack channel uh, for Babeshka, which has 500 people almost in it. Uh, it has 1,800 stars on GitHub, and I also have uh, uh, sponsors on, on GitHub. Uh, so there are quite a lot of users uh, from the ecosystem who are using this, either for their work or, or as a hobby. I did a questionnaire once, and 50% uh, of the people are using it for work, and the other for hobby or, or both. Uh, and the word Babeshka is pretty much a nonsense name which is just a pun on on bash uh, and the word babushka it, it means uh, granny in uh, russian <laughs> okay i think we might have time for one last question so chris Eaton, do you want to uh, unmute yourself you're also the next speaker so uh, this could work quite well um, if you're considering generating JVM bytecode and then interpreting with that, do you think you could generate a sort of custom bytecode and then interpret that? That might be a simpler path towards truffleization. If you've already got logic to generate JVM bytecode, you can generate something simpler but similar. Do you think it's a possible technique? Yeah. Um, if if that is if that would make uh, tra targeting truffle truffle easier than Maybe we could just take the existing closure compiler and adapt it to to this uh, custom bytecode format. I think that would be the the easiest path, maybe. But I don't have a lot of experience in this area, so I I approach this mostly f uh, from a closure standpoint and not so much from. Uh, low level JVM standpoint, but I, I'm interested in, interested in exploring this. All right, uh, okay. well, let's, oh, sorry, do you wanna? Yeah, I, I just want to, want to say that the GraalVM native image has made quite a change also for the closure ecosystem. So uh, yeah, we can now make uh, CLI tools in Clojure, which is was not something we imagined uh, being able to do three or four years ago. So it's it's quite amazing. So thank you also to the GraalVM team to, uh, for making this possible.